Right, you're live. We're live. Right. Okay, we're live. Have a moment. So, so, right. Okay, Jay, I can see you. I've got you. Right, we're live. We're live on. Um, we're live here. So, what I'm going to yeah. do, is, ladies and gents, we're going to have a few people joining the group in a few moments. So, I'm just going to. Um, I'm just going to share into a few. Um, into a few groups now. Yeah, that's great. One moment. Good stuff. Hold on a second. Okay. Share to here. Right, share there into my main group. Okay. Any? You sh have you shared on your on your mystery music profile as well? I did this. I, I did about half an hour ago. Yep. Thank you. Um, thank you, Joe. Right. Okay. So let's just get that one shared. So we're just getting a few more people to um, come onto the group, and then um, and then we'll get started. So let me just share that here. I'm going to share that into here. Into this one. Okay. Now, uh, Vinny, Vinny Jewelries could just come on. Do you know Vinny? Yeah. Great. Oh, no, Vinny, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know Vinny. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, good evening to you, Vinny. I hope all is well. Great to see you joining us. We're just, we're just sharing to a few groups at the moment just before we start. Yeah, great. Let's hope a lot of people start. Um... I will. I will. Getting logged on, be great. Yep. Okay, so we're building up a bit, and then um, share here. Is, um, share in a, in a group. Manage. Okay, nearly there. That one. Right, okay. And find up one more group. So many groups, Jonathan. <laughs> yes, I've, I've shared it into um into four groups at the moment. So yeah. I'm just just waiting just for one more, one or two more people to kind to kindly um, to kindly come on come on board and then we'll and then we'll start. Right, so we have four, we have a few people on. Okay. Right. Oh, looks like okay. it's frozen on Facebook. Pardon? I think it may have frozen on Facebook. No, well, I can see you, so don't, uh, that's fine. Don't worry, it's okay. Right, okay. So we have, a, we have quite a few people on board. Can you hear me, Jay? I can hear you very clearly, yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good evening to you all. Um, and welcome to the interview. First of all, to introduce myself, my name is Jonathan Waterman. I'm an award-winning wedding and events toastmaster, coordinator, planner, celebrant, auctioneer, consultant, and a booking agent. Um, and also a sales and marketing trainer. I'm delighted to be um, interviewing um, my very, very good friend and um, colleague, Jay uh, Mystery. Now, here's a, here's a little um, bio written by Jay, which I've taken as a little excerpt here. If you're looking for event entertainment, you're in the right place. Covering every type of music you can think of and possibly some you can't. Our huge portfolio of highly talented acts are waiting in the wings to be a part of your occasion worldwide. We've been supplying our UK and international clients with stunning, bespoke live entertainment for over 20 years, and we love doing it. 
Our team of professionals will deliver a second to none service for your wedding, corporate event, or special occasion, and provide you with memories that we guarantee will stay with you forever and a lifetime. So that's a little bit about Jay. So Jay, I'm very, very honored um, to be um, interviewing you this evening. Um, before we start, we know 35,000 people have lost their lives during this terrible right. COVID-19 um, um, episode. So what I'd like everyone to do is just to close our eyes for a minute and just basically having people in your thoughts, these lost souls in your thoughts for one minute, you know, and hoping they rest in peace. Say your prayers and then we'll get started on the interview. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for all tuning in. We're just about we're just doing our one minute silence and we're gonna start. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Thank you, Jay, as well. Thank, thank you, you very much, Jonathan. Okay. So, Jay, a very good evening to you. Good evening to you, Jonathan. What a pleasure this is. Thank you, thank very, you very much. much. <laughs> no, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And, you know, Jay's going to be giving a little insight into what he does. We're going to be talking about the, in the industry in general. We're going to be talking about how things can be improved, insurance. It's all different things for you to for you to enjoy. You know, Jay's been in the business for a long time, so let's, let's see what Jay has to say. First of all, Jay... Can I just kindly ask you to please reiterate and tell people who you are and what you do? Just to please elaborate in details, please. Yeah, of course. Jonathan, thank you very much for having me on board. Uh, this is a great pleasure. Wasn't expecting this at all, but thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. This is um, Jay here from uh, uh, Mystery Music. Um, and um, I've been a musician for just over about, probably about 30 years. I can't remember myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and had the opportunity to perform with some great Asian bands uh, and some international artists, A-listed artists as well in my career. Uh, been a freelance musician ever since, um, and it's taken me up to where we are today in running and operating a company called Mystery Music, a live entertainment company that is supplying the wedding and the events industry with live musicians. That's where we are today. Um, Within that industry, we supply Bollywood band budget, where Jonathan, you, you're very, very familiar with, and tablet sitar, Bollywood jazz bands, fusion bands, and other live acts. Right. Well, that's that, that, that's great, actually, Jay. Um, that you've elaborated on, on this. I mean, how many musicians would you say you have on your books altogether? Um, well, that's a difficult question, actually. Here in the UK, we try to use as many musicians as possible uh, from all type of music backgrounds, musical backgrounds. Uh, it could be from, from Western, from European musicians, African musicians, international artists. So we try to give as much as we can to the musicians the opportunity to perform. Uh, I can't give you an exact figure on that because every event differs in its own way, so um, no, no idea. Could, could be hundreds, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, of, of course. I mean, so I mean, I mean it's good. the mentality is basically you try and help your musicians, you try to basically give them work, whether it's UK or international. And mm. I take you've got a very kind of, um, you know, your, 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 data, your, your database, uh, they've known you for a long time, they trust in your product, they know, and you know they're always going to deliver, is that right? That is right, yes. Um, musicians here, we've been very loyal to them. They've been very loyal to us. The musicians, they're getting regular, regular work. I have full trust in them. So basically, I can send them to an event. 
uh, on their own. I don't need to be there, and I know that they're they're going to be they're going to deliver um, the best out of them. They're going to make sure that the client is happy. The performance is going to be satisfactory, and um, yeah, that's where we are with that. Oh no, well, that's um, that's really good and that's reassuring, knowing that you know the people you've got on your books, they're trustworthy. You know, you you've got a good relationship with them. You you work closely with them, and that and that means a lot to the client. That gives a lot of um, you know, how can I how can I explain it? It it, it, it makes the client feel good that you've got trust. a very very strong team. You know, they trust you. You get your repeats. You get your recommendations, which is always a good thing. Um, so, Jayla, thanks for elaborating. Thanks for elaborating on your services and telling people who you are and you know in a bit of detail. If I can just kind of ask you now. How long have you been in the wedding industry for, and how did it all start out for you, really? Um, I think we're approaching about 15 years now um, as mystery music. Prior to that, I was a musician as a freelance artist. Now, uh, about 15 years approaching. So um, in, in that time, we started back in the days from just a sort of an idea where we can supply live musicians to a... Uh, wedding ceremony and we got the opportunity to do that as Tabla Sadar which I thought might not work but it turned out to be okay where the customer said this is brilliant this is exactly what we need during a wedding ceremony while the ceremony is going on to entertain guests while the priest is conducting the ceremony so we thought that's a good thing so going back I thought okay this is a good stepping stone to maybe start something of my own and develop some musicians and see if we can broaden um, uh, the variety of music. So from then we went into double sitar food, we went into like guitarist, pianist, saxophonist, violinist, and then it slowly, slowly, slowly grew from there. And now we have a wide range of live musicians to perform at these events. Oh, well, well, that's absolutely fantastic for you, really. You know, you've explained to the guests how long you've been in it for your... You know, you've told people about the range of people that you've got. I mean, you mentioned you started out yourself sort of, um, you know, as a freelancer. What are you actually trading yourself, Jay? So I play um, in the Indian instrument called tabla. Uh, I do a lot of Latin percussion. Uh, the dual, which is the big dual drum, as you know, which you've seen in processions that we do for band by girls and wedding. Yeah. Well, well that's, that's absolutely um, fantastic. And well, I mean... Over the years, has it really kind of evolved for you? Have you seen a lot of changes in what you're doing? Um, as, as being part of running with music, um, there has been a lot of changes in, in, in supplying musicians. Um, there is other organization, organizations out there that do similar things to us. But where we stand higher on those levels is our customer service and... Uh, what we produce on the day for these events and for the customers, really. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, you know, people come to you, you've got your own set of unique musicians, you know, your, um, you know, that they'll come to you because they know the musicians, they know what they're going to get, basically. It's uh, when well, a competition may have something different. You, It's all about being unique as well. And, your mus and, and I know you've got a lot of unique musicians there, haven't you? Yeah, we have. I mean, you, Jonathan, yourself, you've been part of us for a very very long time as well with your expertise uh, doing toastmasting um where you like experience us performing and i've seen you actually enjoying yourself while you've been doing your job uh, at an event so yes it has yeah brilliantly well no thank you i mean you know the magic the kind of the kind of um magicians that jay has he's mentioned about the doll he's mentioned about the um the tablet of sitar and yeah it's it's music which is jolly basically i mean the 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 the, the doll the beat is phenomenal you know and the and the sitar nice and uh, nice and relaxed basically you, sit, you know if you're enjoying a meal or if you're at a ceremony it's just nice and chilled and it gives a lovely vibe into the room basically it's what it actually does so um yeah That's right. so, that, That's right. so well, no thank you very much sort of um for explaining that um now I've always known, Jay, you, you're very, very, very well respected in the industry by me, by, by lots of other people. Um, it's mostly your work now, would you say? I mean, I know we mentioned it briefly. Is it word of mouth or is it website or social media or any other? Where's most of your work come from? Well, Jonathan, not, not really too sure if I am actually that 
well uh, respected in the industry, but I've made some very, very good connections. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've respected a lot of people and, and, and suppliers within the industry that have helped us out quite a bit as well, where we've got very good recommended work from suppliers like yourself. Um, there is other suppliers, there's catering companies out there, DJs and other organizations that have helped us out to get where we are today. Um, well known, I'm not really too sure really about that. I can't answer that one, Jonathan. <laughs> but um, we're getting there slowly. We're getting there, you know. It's been no, a challenge. We're, we're trying to be head of the game. Well, that's the most important thing. You've got to be, sometimes you've got to be several steps ahead, you know, of, and you've got to keep thinking on your feet. How can you develop more? How, what yeah. can you do now to, to bring on the game, to up the game, so to speak? Um, can I ask you, though, um, do, you, do you actually get a lot of work from your from your from the social media, from the Instagram, from the Facebook? How does that work for you? I think we focus more on. Um, we do get a lot of work out of recommendation. Again, just repeating myself, where where it becomes from suppliers and things. But social media has really kicked off for us as well in the last four to five years, where Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We do get some work out of it. I think Instagram has been a big player for us at the moment in the last one or two years where we've focused on more international events as well. Yes. And we have got out there. We have been doing last year and the year before that some international events. And that has actually come from Instagram. Oh, well, that's fantastic. That's good. So the presence, yeah. the presence of there, you know, you've built up a nice brand, as I say, so you're known internationally as well, which is a good thing. Um now, you mentioned before, I mean, it made me laugh, you said about maybe you were joking about being well-respected. Well, I've, personally, I feel you're well-respected and the people I know you're well-respected. So, you Thank know, you. so you Appreciate know, I've, I've got a lot of time for you and a lot of other people have. There's always going to be certain people in the industry that feel you compete or, or you feel you're still trend, your trend on their toes, this, that and the other. But you know what? That happens in every industry and we all find our own, we all find our own niches in our That's own right. middle world. Do you agree with that? I agree with that totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, as long as we keep our reputation clean, we do the job that is expected to be done, we respect our client, we get respect from them, we produce and we perform on the day according to the client's uh, requirements, I think we'll go a long, long way. Well, I think it's, um, you know, you want you turn up to the event, you always you turn up to the event nice and early, you set up, you're, you're, you're ready to go way before time. And um, the nicest thing on the day is when the client says to you, thank you, and you get a review. Is that Am I right in saying that? Yeah, we actually have now started um, um, not getting an on-the-spot review, but we have actually now had Google reviews uh, escalated on our Google page uh, um, uh, for the last year, year and a half, where we've been asking clients to do a review for us. And that's been really successful for us and from there we've had quite a few recommendation work as well so that's well, what google's worked for us really well as well well that's, that's really really that's really good so you know so ladies and gentlemen you know those of you that want to see any reviews of jay on his past work have, have a little look on google on his um, google places and you'll and, and you'll see so that should give you reassurance of the level that jay's at you yeah. know, you know, again, if that sort of um, works for you. Um, can I ask you though? Obviously, I know yeah. you've performed. You've performed around the country. You've you've been international. Your music, you, your musicians have been international. Can I just kindly ask you um, one one question here? Um, yeah. What is, what is your favourite place you've performed at? Is there any particular place that that sticks in your mind that you loved working in? Um, <laughs> that's a big question. As you know, Jonathan, we. We do get around as artists and suppliers, don't we, really? It, it, it could be London or it could be international or national, you know. It's really, really difficult. I think one place does, actually does. I did like, and I did like working there. It, it wasn't just um, uh, uh, the staff, which were fantastic as well. I think the, the venue that tops it up for me is Edinburgh Castle here in the UK, which I found absolutely stunning. Great mm. to work with. Yeah, well, that's that, that's a good thing, you know. If you're if you're going to go to a venue, you're going to be treated well on arrival. They're going to the the access point is easy for you to set up. They'll they'll treat they'll treat you well as a supplier. That, that, 
that means a lot, doesn't it? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's suppliers that can actually blog about them and, and say good things. They can put a blog on them saying, you know, you work so and so, so and so, you that you recommend that venue for this reason, that reason. Yeah. It's all about the positive positive publicity, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. And, and we we do perform in, in, in London a lot. Majority of our events are are all in London in, in city. But when you're actually going out to a, to a different part of the world and you're experiencing how people operate there and how they operate here, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a big eye-opener. And, and I think going to Edinburgh Castle was a big, big eye-opener, traveling there, going, going into the castle, working in a place that you've never worked in before, doing your homework well in advance for the client and, and delivering on the day. Yeah. Mm. We have yeah. done international gigs and events as well, like Italy, Spain, you know, France, where you're in a different world. That is a different country, you know, but all the groundwork is done from here. And you've got great suppliers, everyone to help you out to what you need to do and what you need to achieve. Yeah, I mean, it's basically all about the teamwork, you know, where, where everyone's yeah. going to try mucking. Obviously, you're working in your professional capacity. They're working in theirs. But it's but it's all about helping each other at the end of the day, isn't it? So it's all about teamwork coming together. It is teamwork, definitely teamwork. I mean, if it, if it wasn't for the suppliers that we have here that has helped us progress, and a big thank you to all the uh, the, the musicians that are working for us as well on or, on a regular basis. I think without the musicians, the quality of the musicians that we've got in the UK, which I think is far most best in the world, um, they've helped. And, and, and progressed us further where we are today with all their talents. Mm. No, that's, 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 that's a very, very good thing to say. And, you know, um, coming from you, Joe, I'm sure it's all taken on board. And I really appreciate everything that you've um, told them. I'm sure a few of them are listening this evening. So, um, so very, very kind work there. Um, now, you, you discussed obviously about Edinburgh. Um, you, you know, obviously the logistics were good. You enjoyed performing there. The staff were great. Have you come across many venues where you've personally found you've gone into, and the the atmosphere has been cold? The staff haven't been haven't you know don't want to help you, and it, and, it, and it's it's a bit of a sour opener to the starting event, isn't it? It is indeed. When you've pre-planned yourself with a client, and you've assured reassured the client that we're going to turn up to the venue, we're going to do X, Y, and Z and you've spoken to um, the events manager at the actual venue itself that this is what it is in black and white and this is what we're going to deliver and then you don't get that in response or you don't get that in when you're there that is a down that, that is really like a letdown basically yeah it, it's it's something which is um you know we certainly need to be be addressed with a few venues i mean most venues are kind of compliant and they they work with their um closely with the wedding and event professionals but i, I do hear a few reports where there are a few venues that could, could kind of um you know up their game so to speak a little bit so and that, yeah. that's what they generally in the industry is that right it is right you can write a list and list and list of places where you have not failed, but where they have failed to deliver when they're supposed to be delivering for the client on the day. And you, you then ended up picking up the pieces. So yeah, I mean, it can be a struggle sometimes. It can be, yeah. But we try our level best, you know, to, to make the ends meet at the end of the day and, and do what we've got to do best. Well, that, that's, that, that's absolutely, um, absolutely right. Um, I mean, do you, do you find as well for your, obviously, you got all your music musicians. You ask a lot for your public liability insurances and your pack tests and certificates by the venues. Oh yes, yes, and I think that's a very important document or documents really uh, to be produced. It makes you feel more safe. I think the client feels more reassured that you are a legit company. You've got everything as as certifications behind you. Uh, if there is any issues later on, then you've got those documents to prove it. You know. I think all the clients need to make sure that all suppliers do have these um, documentations in place. Yes, very important. No, well, well absolutely. You know, it's um, at the end of the day, it's the paper trail. You know that that can be referred to should something happen. You know, and uh, unfortunately, I I do hear 
the cases where, you know, people haven't been asked for this or the venue haven't asked for that. This one hasn't been asked for this. And I, I'm hoping that people will, people will learn and we'll, um, you know, and we'll ask for the necessary and we'll ask for the documents. And then at least everybody knows on premises that they're safe. That's the main thing. Um, that is now, correct. Now, if I can ask you, Jay, I mean, you've mentioned obviously you do, you've done weddings, you've, you, you know, you've been to Edinburgh Castle, you, you guys have performed, etc. Can I ask you, what's your take on the corporate event market? Have you done many corporate events in London or in Manchester or award ceremonies, that type of thing? Ooh. Mainly in London, uh, we th the way that we get involved with corporate functions is that we have a lot of corporate entertainment companies that do give us the work. And thank you to those entertainment companies um, where we would represent them on the day. However, but we will go there and perform for award ceremonies, conferences. We're doing workshops um, in London mainly. Uh, I haven't done much outside of London, but mainly all in London City. Yeah, because the corporate event market is also very, is one that's... Um, it's a that's difficult one. Very, very, very big. And it's a lot of that, a lot of that is word of mouth, really, isn't it, for corporates? It is. I mean, so sometimes it's, it's, it's who you know, isn't it, that that's working behind the scene. Um, and, and sometimes we find that um, in any particular contact to get into the corporate market would be a bonus. Uh, yeah. We do several, actually, more, more than a few a year of uh, corporate functions in London. Yeah, no, that's that, that's a, that's a good thing. You know, it's good, it's good that you know you you do it and they invite you back for the following year. You know, so I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that proves your credibility. Really, you know, it proves that you're, you know, you guys, you know what you're doing. You're work closely mm -hmm. with, um, obviously, with everybody to make sure that the clients has a memorable experience because you're there for the clients at the end of the day. We are indeed, yeah. That's the biggest thing. Well, yeah. no. The clients are the most important thing. Yeah, it's the clients at the end of the day that want the solution to a problem. Their problem, you know, lied. They want Indian musicians and you provided the Indian, Indian musicians and they've performed. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's not the only... Uh, we, we do have a wider range of musicians, uh, Jonathan. I think we've started exploring uh, around the world music now. So it's not just Indian music that we do. We also do like funk, soul, reggae, African music, Japanese music, you know, it's around the world music now. So um, we've, we've got some great musicians on board. I think at the moment the, the clientele has changed. It's not, it may, it may be an Indian wedding, but they want something different. And that's where we would come in and do a bespoke service and offer that to them and say, look, why don't we do something a little bit more fusion? Because nowadays there's a lot of mixed weddings. So you need to cater for both cultures. And these cultures could be anything uh, from any background. So we will sit down with the client and we will go through their background of what level of music they're into, what interests they have in life. And then we would do something, create something for them specially. Yeah, that's a very, very, very good thing to be honest with you. That you're, you know, you're there. To, you're listening. You're, you're listening deep into the client. You're, you're discovering obviously what they love, what works for them, and that's what it's all about. Discover, you know, dig, dig, dig deep, dig deep into the client, see what they're thinking, see what they, see what their story is, and then, and then what you're doing is you're creating an experience for them according to their wishes. I, I think that's wonderful, really. That you're very, very flexible in what you're doing. Well, it's, it's about understanding your client, isn't it, really? The more, the more you understand about them, the better you'll produce something for them at the end of the day for, you know? Mm. No, I, I, I can relate to that. I can, I can totally relate to my family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like with you, Jonathan, isn't it? Like, you know, when you're seeing a client, you're going to make sure that you understand them clearly what's going on with that client and what they exactly want. You, you're going to go the extra mile to make sure they've got everything. Well, yes, indeed. That's, that's, absol that's absolutely correct. That's right. For me, it's, for me personally, Joe, Joe, yes, it is. For me, it's all going that extra mile and, um, you know, offering them something, being, being, offering something different, but not sort of selling it to them, but kind of expressing the benefits to them, so to speak. And a solution. And a solution. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Um, so, so a question I really want to ask you now, Jay. Um, okay. What really makes you tick? Where does all the passion come from? Um, when I was young, I was always pushed into music. Um, but um, today is when I'm performing or when our musicians are performing and I can see the guest really, really enjoying themselves. That's what gives me the passion, the drive to move forward with it. Really? Yeah, no, well, that's that, the excitement out of the client, you know. Well, that's good, you know. It's, um, you know, if you can, if you, so basically, just to recap on that, if you're seeing the clients that have, they're having fun, they're happy with the service, that's making you more passionate. And it's basically putting you on cloud nine, isn't it? Really, it's making you feel good knowing that you've done it, you've achieved what they've asked for. That's right. It is. And it does make a big step on board, really, about this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, just sort of um, just tying it, tying it with what we said. I mean, do you do you kind of have any particular markets within the wedding and events industry you want to do? You want to develop and hone into more? I mean, I know you're very involved in Asia. You're involved, obviously, in Africa. You said, you know, other international events. What well, well, what's your sort of like main sort of um, sector now? Main sort of market you really really want to develop more? Do you want in particular? Well, develop, um, yeah, I mean, th there is areas that we like to get involved with as well, is which is like all, all these big, big festivals going out there with Glastonbury, you know, the Bath Festival, jazz festivals. I, lo I love to take my musicians there and perform. There is one goal in mind that I want to venture out. Um, I'm in the process of um, getting some information about that and moving forward in those areas, definitely. The, the, the wedding and, and, and the event side of things, are always going to be there um we're always going to supply hopefully supply musicians to these events but i want to get into festivals yeah well now that's that, that's a good thing you've got aspirations there for the future you know you're you know you're you're thinking you're, you're thinking ahead and that's you know just you know just to kind of um de just to kind of develop your brand more as well which is you know that's always a good thing when you're you know people that want to expand it's uh I have admiration for that. So, you know, very, 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 very big. Um, well done to you on that one, Joe. Yeah, it's uh, a big step on that, actually, festivals. When you're, when you're performing in front of tens of thousands of people, it's a big step, you know. No, of course, of course it would be. That's another thing for passion. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely. It's, um, yeah, it kind of puts the passion all together, you know. You know, it's, um, as I said, you, you, you've done weddings, you've done corporates, you want to, um, you've done gala dinners, you want to develop into festivals. Absolutely, absolutely amazing, you know. And, and I'm Thank sure you. from there you'll you're develop even more. To, and, and I think what's the next big thing in the J mystery world, really, in the mystery music world? Um, yeah. no, which is really, really good. Um, yeah. I mean, can I ask you, though, um, in relation to your... In relation to your website, do you do you actually going back to a little bit of marketing here? Can mm -hmm. I ask you, are you involved in a lot of website blogging at all? Is that something that you do a lot? You blog and then you share your blogs and everything? Uh, not well, not through the actual website itself, Jonathan. Uh, I think where we're looking at where we benefit more from is from Instagram, Facebook, and uh, word of mouth recommendations. Blogging, um, mystery music website. I haven't really got involved in that area too because I don't think there's been a need for it at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're quite happy where we are at the moment just through social media and social media itself through Instagram and Facebook has helped a lot. Definitely. Yeah. I know, I know. That's absolutely, um, that's absolutely fantastic, really. Yeah, I know. It's good. You know, your presence is on your Instagram, your Facebook, your, um, you know, all anything anything else your LinkedIn whatever else you know and you're getting your good exposure from there so you know you're um you sort of know where you are in terms of your social media etc I mean how do you find um how do you find do you have a company to do a match with Pinterest or Twitter um well at the moment because we, we we do a feed from Instagram and it goes on to Facebook and Twitter automatically uh pin don't do much on that whatsoever really I, I've never looked Gone, gone that far on on those areas. Yeah, no, that's yeah, yeah. 
That's fair play. But what's, there's a new one which everyone's talking about now in the market. I don't know if it's going to work for you. Have you come across TikTok? Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of people doing a lot of stuff on TikTok, actually. Um, haven't looked into it deeply. Uh, maybe I might do a post on that and, and test it out. But I've been seeing a lot on there. You done anything on that, Jonathan? Well, I have, actually. And I, found, uh, <laughs> I, love, I actually love it. Uh, I think it's very innovative. It's very... Um, it's as though it's algorithm free at the moment. Whereas I find you find with Facebook and Instagram, you've got your set, you've got your set algorithms. The the organic engagement is not so great, I find, okay. as what it used to be at one point. They've really cut back on the organic engagement. Hence, you've got to pay. Unless you, you know, the only way you can re, one way you can do very well on Facebook and Instagram is if you have a real, real striking post. But it's got to be yeah. innovative. Now with Good. TikTok, you can you can post whatever you need to, and you the the reach seems to be very very good. The reach, yeah. okay. a few hashtags, and the reach seems to really go far. So it's certainly one which I think is the future. Mm. There's so many platforms, though, isn't there? There's so many social media platforms. You just don't know which one to use at the right time. That's the problem. That is the problem. It's, but at the end of the day, you've got to do what you sort of feel comfortable with. Correct. And, you know, and and again, if Pinterest and TikTok work for you, then maybe explore and see, and see if it does work for you, really. Yeah, um, it's just a matter of giving it a go, isn't it, Jonathan? Um, no. I think where we are for the last, where we have been for the last couple of years, Instagram, Facebook have worked, you know, brilliantly. Word of mouth recommendation work has worked brilliantly as well. No, but that's fantastic. Um, so moving on to the next question in relation, it's saying that's been going around the industry on a on a really vast scale, sort of, you know, as soon as the COVID nineteen came in, and there's always been a lot of um, controversial, a lot of controversy. In the next question, I'm going to ask you. But I want to get your take on this. Um, do you feel that the wedding or do you feel that wedding or events insurance should be standard to all clients, and what are your reasons behind it? Um, yeah, it's a difficult question to answer, actually, Jonathan. Uh, I think the whole wedding and events industry has been affected really badly. Um, we, we have um, uh, postponed 26 events for next year, and um, we've, we've, we've had to give, because this is the way that we operate, is that we've had to give about four, four credits back to uh, clients where they've not been able to choose another date for next year or they're not being able to move their current location somewhere else or, or for the future you know so covid has affected us quite badly this year yeah because it seems to be that um you know the, the, the stats show just only 30 percent of people took wedding insurance out um this yeah. year um you know i mean what basically people have taken insurance six months a year ago they would have had some sort they would have had some indemnities in relation to pandemics not all insurance companies but some were actually given indemnities for the pandemics yeah. but irrespectively of that the wedding insurance would cover you up for, for, for a usual death in the family for um, you know for a supplier going into liquidation you know a venue going bust all that type of thing you know and it's so do you, do you not think that's relevant to clients to have that from day one Oh, it is, it is definitely insurance uh, will benefit the client either way. How the event will go, if it won't go ahead, or if the supplier has issues or anything like that, at least they're covered. Definitely recommend uh, a, a client to have insurance. No, thank you very much. You know, thanks for, and thank you for your um, reasoning behind it. Um, just moving on to the next question. Just a few more here now. Um, okay. I'd like to know. Um, I know you've discussed it very briefly. What you've done, you've had your postponements and everything. I mean, how has, in a nutshell, how has COVID nineteen really had an impact on your business? How has it impacted you? Well, we've got a few bookings um, um, coming up in um, October, November, December this year, but at the moment they're still going ahead. Uh, from March this year. When the lockdown happened until i think about august we've had uh, events being postponed or cancelled or moved into next year basically so yeah we have had a um 
a bad effect on this. Um, but we're working with the client, so we're quite very, very flexible in saying to the client, look, we, we are going to work with you regardless of if you need to move the date. We'll, we'll try accommodating you for next year or later on in the year. If you're able to find a venue suitable for you, we'll work with you. Not an issue, that end. But yeah, I think it's affected everybody, not just the wedding and events industry. It's affected every industry out there. And it seems like now today, I think people value their life a little bit more than what they did to understand how this has affected them. Yeah, I mean, no doubt it's had, as you say, it's had a massive impact within the hospitality industry. And, um, you know, obviously with all, the, with all the social distancing and everything, there's no sort of um, time to say when we're going to actually go back and, um, you know, go back to how things were. So I, I think from that point of view, I think the whole the whole industry is going to change, and um, yeah. we have to we have to basically adapt accordingly. Um, and, and general life will change as well. I agree with that. I mean, I mean, basically moving that forward slightly. I mean, how do you, in your view, how do you see the future of the wedding and events industry? Um, I think it's going to take time now to be as busy as what you used to be in the past. Uh, people are going to be more cautious in what they're doing and how they're spending money, I think, um, and, and having a little bit more value for life. That's the way I see it. Yeah, I mean, that's a very, very interesting way of putting it. It's, um, yeah, but things will be certainly valued differently in terms of the way that people are. I, I absolutely um, agree with that. It's... Um, no, no one knows. There's all speculation at the moment saying things might happen sooner or things might happen a bit later. We, do, we, we, we just don't know. So we just don't know. Correct. I, I think, as you say, all we can do really is just sit on the fence, you know, and, and, and all we can do is hope, look after your clients that you have, do the best you can to help them. Meanwhile, right. stay in touch and then, you know, move forward and then hopefully move forward in the future. I mean, do you feel next year? Do you feel next year that um, things could resume, or do you think this year? Well, difficult to say, actually, Jonathan. We don't know. This is the big question. We just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, let's hope things get back to normal as soon as possible, so everyone can get back, you know, living their lives in a normal way. But we just don't know. Don't know. We, we, there's nothing that we can predict at the moment whatsoever. <laughs> No, we well, don't try. Absolutely, you know, that's a very good point you've made. And thank you. Um, so you know, we're coming to the end of the interview, um, Jay. Um, okay. Can I finally ask you: uh, Is there anything else you would like to add to this interview? And how would you like to close? Well, thank you very much, Jonathan, for having me on. It, it, it's been a great pleasure. I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, how do you think, in in your professional world of events? And what you're doing at the moment, and you have been with clients and supplying them a fantastic service that you always do. How has COVID affected you? you know, for, for me, it's been it's been, um, just like yourself, really. I'm having to work. I'm having to work very, very, very closely with clients, trying to um, mediate with them. You know, it's um, mediating, trying to get them to um, to postpone. Is my first is basically my first point to call. You know. It's taught me a lot, where, whereas as, as far as contracts are concerned, to basically tie up my contract a little bit more to include a bit about pandemics in the future. But as things stand, um, I'm working very, very closely with them, offering them postponements as to where possible, where, where you know, hopefully there's availability. Um, if not, I'm, I'm offering, I'm generally um, offering um, deposits back. But, I'll, you know, it, I'm, I'm just having to take basically every situation as it comes. Everyone's different, Definitely. And, right. and, and I look into a um, and, and I kind of just, as I say, I take every case as it comes and give them and, and give them the right advice along the way, and you know, and hopefully just do the right thing for them. That's, the, the, most, right. that's the most. Yeah. That's the most important thing. I, I hope that's cleared that up for you, Jay. I mean, it, yeah, it has. It's, it's, it's the only way forward, isn't it? We've just got to try our level best to keep the client happy in each and every way that's right yeah is there any more words you would like to um say before we that you'd like to close upon no um just thank you very much for all the listeners that have been out there today and um, 
we hope that, uh, and I hope that Jonathan's um, interview has been successful and let's, let's hope that all the clients can, um, we'll see you soon. Yeah, I mean, that's a, big, a very, very big thank you to um, to Jay here for his time, for coming on and, you know, being interviewed. It's been, it's been very, very good and I hope you've all taken a lot out of it. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you, as I say, to our viewers for coming on. A very, very big thank you once again to Jay. You know, thank you very much, Jonathan. Really appreciate it. I mean, you know, any um, questions, feel free to leave them in the comments here, and then, then you know, then Jay can get back to you accordingly. And Absolutely. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much for your time, and um, and keep well, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Send that.